Coming up on show 683, after having a wait list of over a year at times, Hyundai now say they're going to increase the electric Kona production. Plus on the show today, Aston Martin's EV plant in difficulty Hummer's EV. Tesla's storage deployments I missed talking about on yesterday's show. And secrets behind Rolls-Royce's EV plane. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. My name is Martin Lee. Edition for Friday 31st of January. I go through every EV story so you don't have to. Thank you to myev.com for not only helping me make this show, but also putting on a big, big event. It's going to be next weekend. It's going to be on Saturday. And if you want to go and check out EVs and tea on Saturday the 8th at Basecamp Miami, along with Inside EVs, Evernex, and some of the biggest YouTube stars out there as well giving talks, go along, get a goodie bag, uh, meet the stars. You can do that at EVs and tea. Check out the URL, evsandtea.com. It's going to be a big, big event. So, lead story today, Hyundai have announced a drastic reduction in delivery times for the Kona Electric here in Europe. The Hyundai Kona, a great, great car with a big battery, 64 kilowatt hour battery, will go a long, long way and you'll do it nicely. It's a great car, sister car, cousin car if you like, because it's very similar, the Kia e Nero. No news on that yet. So staying with Hyundai and the Kona, uh, from March, so we're only a month away, the Korean car manufacturer will produce the electric model in its Czech plant, reports Electrive. Hyundai has confirmed rumours from the middle of last year. In addition to making the electric cars in Europe, production in South Korea will be increased. Now, in total, Hyundai promises to triple the availability of the Kona Electric or the Kona Electro in Germany. Didn't know that. Love learning new things. Uh, The Electro with a K, as in E-L-E-K, Tro. For customers in Europe, the increased capacity is now to keep pace with rising demand, which has exceeded expectations since the start of sales in 2018. Many people cynically, uh, including myself, would point out that there are new EU emissions rules for all the car makers that kicked in, oh, this month. And it means that for every, at the minute, it's, it's, it's a kind of sliding scale, but at the minute it means very, very roughly for every EV you sell, you can sell two stinky combustion cars that have a nice big fat margin on and so that's why well many of the ev or the car companies with evs available didn't want to sell them in europe until 2020 now they are incentivized to sell evs into europe i'm not saying that's happened here i'm just saying that that 12 what was in 2019 a 12 month waiting list has magically reduced. From Push EVs, they say the Hyundai Kona Electric, with its WLTP range of 300 miles, that's almost 500 Ks, uh, strongly appeals to the European market. Hyundai have made it the best-selling, they could have made it, they could have made it the best-selling electric hatchback in Europe if they'd wanted to. They have, we think they have the battery supply. Uh, There was all sorts of rumours flying around, which they didn't comment on either way, but the reason for the shortage of cars in 2019 was nothing to do with the new emissions regs it was all to do with battery supply from their suppliers lg chem and i think sk innovation you i think i've never been able to fully confirm that the kona and the e-nero i've read a few times over the years were not going to sell although they're both the same battery size 64 kilowatt hours different chemistry and different cell manufacturers you read a lot, a lot of journalists. They're, oh, they're, the, they're the same car, same drivetrain, same powertrain, same battery pack. I'm not sure they are. However, I've never been able to fool. I've never had, met anyone from Hyundai or Kia that could tell me otherwise. However, they could have made it one of the best-selling cars, but they couldn't make enough of them, they said. However, now we've got to 2020, they're not the only one selling a lot of EVs. The Renault Zoe will have the sales numbers for January early next week. <laughs> They're going to be really big. Peugeot E208, Opel Corsa E, Volkswagen ID3. Legacy automakers will only increase the production of EVs to minimal levels, just enough to avoid EU emissions fines. They don't have a very big margin on EVs. Why make and sell more of them than you really have to, would be the cynic's take on that. We won't see legacy automakers producing enough EVs to challenge Tesla at least until 2022. We're two years away, really, from Volkswagen with the ID3 being able to ramp up to such a level at which they're able to take on Tesla. This year, they certainly won't. Staff deliveries then 
It'll be the first reservation holders. Then, really, 2021, we'll get to some bigger numbers for the ID3. The ID4 is going to be the one that goes to the US. So it won't really be until 2022 uh, that the ID th- uh, range has some good numbers being produced. And by then, well, then we're into Cybertruck territory and a lot of Model Ys being sold all around the world. So we'll see. It's not as if Tesla are standing still. Okay, moving on. Aston Martin's cash lifeline from the Canadian billionaire Lawrence Stroll has one major casualty, and that is Aston Martin's push into EVs. According to Automotive News Europe, the launch of the full electric Lagonda, which was due in 2020, has been mothballed for now. Development of the Rapide E, their first electric model, is under review, despite the car being, I thought, pretty much complete. Uh, The rethink on electrification, which is a costly technology, which previous Aston Martin execs had deemed vital, Uh, will see the company switch focus to providing hybrids instead, Uh, part of a reset plan that will see unspecified job cuts and restructuring of sales and marketing operations uh, with that big cash injection. Well, uh, following months of rumours, General Motors confirmed the return of the Hummer. Uh, With an earth-friendly twist, the name previously attached to gas-guzzling SUVs doing 10 miles to the gallon uh, will now be on an EV sold under the GMC brand. Uh, To the Super Bowl ad on Sunday night, debuting the electric Hummer. Specifications more like a supercar than a truck, says Digital Trends. Uh, It's officially going to be called the GMC Hummer EV. It's going to have a 1,000 horsepower, 11,500 pound-feet of torque. Only a handful of cars in the world, like the Faraday Future double F91, uh, get four-digit horsepower outputs. And they're normally very, very expensive as well. Uh, The Hummer EV will be the undisputed ruler of torque. The Hummer EV will make its first public appearance in the Super Bowl ad during the second quarter. And it will be revealed in May, so we can all get a good look at it. Jalopnik had their own take on it, though. Uh, They say, first... There's the Hummer name and the brand itself, which is about as anti-environmental as you can possibly imagine. The connotations when you hear the word Hummer have always been actively hostile to any sort of ecological awareness in a very brutal and almost childishly reactionary way. If people drove hybrid Priuses and Leafs as a way to say I love the Earth via their car, driving a Hummer said F the Earth. Uh, It all means that now EVs are just another kind of car in our minds. EVs don't need unique traits pointing out. No matter how important those traits may actually be, they're now just cars. We're now in the era where an EV gets promoted and advertised and understood with delirious irrationality as any other car out there. And that's what makes EVs just another car. Brilliant. Well, something that I didn't talk about on yesterday's show, there was so much Elon news, I wanted to bring you all those clips uh, that some of the other bits and bobs kind of went by the wayside. Didn't tell you that Tesla reported new quarterly energy storage installations of 530 megawatt hours of storage and 54 megawatts of solar deployed in the last quarter of last year, says Renewables Now website. The fourth quarter included the first deployments of their new battery storage product, the commercial integrated system, which they named Megapack. Megapack. The company deployed 1.5, uh, 1.65 gigawatt hours of energy last year in total, uh, which is more than it installed in every previous year added together, combined. The Q4 solar deployments are up 26% quarter on quarter. Uh, Tesla said it continued to ramp both solar glass roof production and installations, but didn't provide specific figures. And of course, every time we talk about more storage being energy storage, uh, 530 megawatt hours in the quarter and uh, 1.65 gigawatt hours in the year, all of those require cells. And like every car require cells so for every cell that goes into energy storage like a power wall power pack and a mega pack mega pack it's a cell that isn't going into a car so it's a balancing act isn't it It really is a balancing act finally when rolls royce in december unveiled its new electric plane it said it would be the fastest electric aircraft capable of 300 miles an hour it also said the plane would fly from london to paris on a single charge and according to the website oilprice.com 
Yes, I do even have to read these kind of sites to bring you the news. Uh, the aircraft has three battery packs that power three electric motors. Each pack weighs 450 kilograms and a total of 72 kilowatt hours, according to the project manager, uh, Matthew Parr. Uh, the best battery cell shape for the aircraft battery pack turned out to be those little cylindrical cells. Parr said that they hold a lot of energy and they can release it quickly at very high power. And the secret to the weight and the packaging materials using as little as possible for the lightest possible weight. There are 200 companies working on electric aircraft technology and the promise is really, really big. Electric motors require a lot less maintenance than jet fuel engines. They're cheaper over their lifetime and of course are a lot more environmentally friendly. People get flight shamed, don't they? I haven't taken a flight in a long time. But if I have to, I might have to pop to uh, Rome in a couple of weeks. I'm setting up a podcast project. That would mean I could drive it in two days in a in a Tesla. I could supercharge all the way down and then spend a day there. And then two days. I could lose a week. And with a new little fella in addition to the family, I'm not going to do that. I'm not. Dad's not going to be away for five days. However, I could fly, I could do it in a day, like an early morning flight, build their podcast studio for them in the Rome office, and be back again, all in a day. And I'm sure that I'll feel a little bit guilty on the plane, and then, you know, maybe if I mention it on social media, a bit of flight shaming going on, so we really, really can't wait until we can take flights guilt-free. It needs to be, pardon the pun, a flying visit. All right, question of the week this week. I'm asking your feedback on what we can do to the podcast. But, it, I mean, really, it's an open-ended question. You can tell me any time things that you'd like to see me do more, less of, differently, better. Uh, let me know any time. Email hello at evnewsdaily.com. Leave a comment on socials. There are 231 patrons of the podcast, and those people make this happen now. You can become one at Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash EV News Daily. But look, no pressure. If you can do one thing for me, it would be to share this with somebody who doesn't listen yet. Find a future listener and play your part. Uh, 682 previous shows in the archive, and I'm always around. If you catch me on social, search EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>